for its spring meeting. Uh, it's the first of what could be two spring meetings. It is March 22nd, 2021. Uh, welcome okay. everyone. Um, happy to introduce our new member, Adam Rubenstein. Adam, is there anything you'd like to say or would you start to be on the hot spot and introduce yourself? Uh, we're delighted that you could join here. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, thank everyone for the opportunity to serve. Uh, moved to Reston a couple of years ago, approximately from Arlington, and um, look forward to working with all of you. Uh, again, thanks very much. And I think that um, Adam will be a big plus to the committee. I've had a chance to chat with him a bit. He has lots of ideas, concerns, um, opportunities for improvement, uh, as we all do in, especially in um, uh, Ped Bike. Um, and uh, he lives in the, um, the Wheelie area. Um, May, or is it possible to do a roll call of who's here? Or of, so, or of the committee, uh, pardon me. Who's here? Ma Madam Chair, uh, May Fang will be doing roll call. She will be um, additionally handling the meeting and she's going to do some, uh, in addition to the roll call, some introductory remarks due to COVID, et cetera, et cetera. But yes, uh, yes, yes. I am going to pass it over to May here. Thank you very much, uh, Ray. And May, please unmute. I'm calling to. Okay. So we, good hear, there, we weren't able to hear you earlier, May. Can you hear me now? Can hear you fine. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is May Fan, and I work for Fairfax County Department of Transportation Coordination and Funding Division. So welcome to tonight's Western Transportation Service District Advisory Board meeting of March 22nd, 2021. Us conduct this meeting electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedure authorized by Virginia Free Information Act. This advisory board needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. It's a bit Cumbersome, so I ask you in the band for your patience. Okay. So first, because uh, each member in this rest, uh, resident transportation service district advisory board is participating in this meeting from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of members is participating and that each member's voice is clear audible and at an appropriate volume for all the, for all the other members. Accordingly, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in this meeting to state your name and the location from which you are participating. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. Following this roll call, we will vote to establish that every member can hear every other member. So I'm going to start to call um, start the roll call. Okay. Um, Maggie Parker. I am here. Thank you. Kelly Weston Hoff. I'm here from Reston. Michael Shinda Decker. Here, joining from home. John Kosak Kosarek. Okay. Angela Roberts. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm here and I'm calling you from Laredo, Texas. Oh. 
Thank you. Um, Ann Mader. She is unable to attend. She uh, reported in. Okay. Peter Henry. Okay. Um, John Mooney. Present uh, from my home in Reston. Okay. Robert Gaudi. Present uh, attending from my home in Reston Town Center. Thank you. Gary Malting. Present and uh, attending from my home in Preston. Thank you all. Okay. At this point, I will ask Chairman Parker to call a vote to establish that every member can hear every other member. So please state your name prior to calling a motion or approving a motion. So, Chairman uh, Parker, I will pass it over to you. Uh, thank you. The park, uh, Parker asks for um, a motion. As described by Gary. Uh, thank you for your motion. Is there a second, please? Second. Second, John Mooney. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, there you go, May. The motion has been. A, are, are there any not in favor? May the motion's been moved and approved. Thank you, Chairman. Um, next, we are having uh, so having established that each member voice may be heard by every other member. We must next establish the nature of the emergency that compelled this emergency procedures. The fact that we are meeting electronically, what type of electronic communication is being used and how we have arranged for public access to this meeting. The state of emergency caused by COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this board to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend any such meeting, and that as such, FOIA Euro process, which required the physical assembly of this board in the physical presence, presence of the public cannot be implemented safely or practically. The board may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated audio conferencing line, and that line may the public access this meeting by calling a four four six two one three nine five six. Okay. So now I will ask our chairman to call a vote on to hold this meeting electronically due to the state of emergency caused by the COVID nineteen pandemic. Please state your name prior to calling a motion or approve a motion. Madam Chairman. Uh Parker looks for uh a motion to qualify May's statement. So moved, Robert Dowdy. Thank you, Robert. A second? I second that motion. Gary? Gary Hoffman, sorry. Thank you very much. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, May, I'm happy to report that it was approved unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie Park. Maggie. Finally, it is now required that all men addressed on today's agenda must address the emergency itself uh, necessary for continuity in fact as county government and or statutorily required or necessary to continue operation and the discharge of this board's lawful purpose, duties, and responsibility. And it's so moved. So, and then some rules for our meeting. All right, the meeting will be recorded. Recording of the meeting will be uploaded to Reston Transportation Service District Advisory Board website within 10 working days of this meeting to avoid any sound quality the feedback issue. Participants should keep their microphone muted and less speaking. Please use the hand raised feature to ask questions or speak. 
Due to the sound quality and the feedback issue, WebEx meeting run best if speakers wait until they are called on to begin speaking. At last, attendees may use the Q&A feature to ask questions during and after the meeting. Please do not use the chat feature to comment or ask questions. If you are joining us by phone, please hold your question until the end of the presentation. To ask a question, push star three. To raise your hand and wait for a moderator to call on you to ask you a question. Once you're finished, push star three to lower your hand. Okay, Madam Chair, I just finished our procedure guidance and the virtual meeting and get us pass the on call to and on our agenda and the pass and choose. So the next will be approval from our Madam November. Madam Chairman, this oh. is Tom. Pardon me, hi. Uh, yes, Tom, it's Maggie Parker. How may I help you? Just to clarify, May, I think we need one more, we need one more vote, do we not? There was a third motion. They did not vote on the third motion or are there just two tonight? I think just two. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, Tom, uh, this is Ray. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. So I, I believe it's just two, Tom. It's um, the vote that all of the uh, participating members can hear each other, uh, hear, see each other. And then the um, the vote to have the meeting electronically. Okay, just want to make sure. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Yes, May. Yeah, uh, I just want to mention, uh, like uh, we just mentioned before, and uh, I think Supervisor Alcorn, it's um, uh, in it's in this meeting. I'll just give a time to see if Supervisor Alcorn. Do you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, Did no, you? I'm just lurking. I, I don't want to slow you down. <laughs> keep going. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, are so, we, yeah, go ahead, May. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, next on our agenda is the approval for our November 16, 2020 meeting. Um, the Meeting minutes was including in the uh, package I sent last Friday. So, Maggie, if you can ask action on the meeting minutes. I would be happy to, May. It's uh, Maggie Parker speaking. I do have one question prior to that to staff, um, and it, it's it's probably my memory, but the bylaws were are included were included in this meeting package. And there were still um, existing red line markers on it, especially on the first, only on the first page. Um, are those questions that came up after we approved them last fall that we'll need to discuss this evening? Madam Chair, this is Ray Johnson. Thank you, Ray. Uh, they, the, the, the bylaws, what we had intended to discuss with you this evening is um, taking the bylaws that the advisory board had already approved and taking them to the board in May, May of this year to get board, uh, board approval, board of supervisors approval. We, if there are any outstanding issues with respect to the bylaws, then we will uh, we'll have them corrected prior to them getting to the board. Uh, but go ahead. I'm sorry. No, Ray. Thanks very much. That's fine. We can discuss just two quick things once we get to bylaws. But sure. I appreciate sure. the clarification. Okay. Sure. So, uh, Chair Parker does ask for the approval of. I'm sorry. I'd like to ask for a motion to approve and then we can have discussion if needed. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the November 16th, 2020 meeting? Move to approve the November minutes, Robert Gaddy. 
Thank you, Robert. Is there a second? Schindelbecker, second. Thank you very much. Um, is there any discussion on the minutes? Any corrections or additions or deletions? Alrighty, all in favor? Aye. Excellent. Aye. Uh, Aye. Are there any uh, any not in favor? Uh, may we approve those call minutes? Uh, the November sixteenth minutes uh, unanimously. Thank you very much, Chairman. You're welcome. Okay, so we can get to our presentation. Okay, so today I will give some the transportation project updates, multimodal project updates, and we will have a touch up with our service district and road bond allocation and adjustment up to date, as well as mention uh, the bylaw, give some bylaw updates. Okay, so Dallas Real Silver Line Phase 2. So this project is a 11.2 mile silver line extension from Willie Avenue to Route 772 in Ashburn, including six new rail stations. Fairfax County has three, and uh, Dallas Way Airport has one, and Loudoun County has two. The project has made is 2.78 billion, and overall phase and the rail line system and the station and the rail yard at Dallas is 99% complete. Uh, sub some substantial completion targets for septem September 3, 2021. And uh, the opening of a revenue service will be established approximately four to six months after um, the substantial completion. And here's the, uh, the project updates is we're doing the cleanup at the station, wayside facilities and the guideway um, and code inspections, interior station finishes and touch up and some punch list activities at the rail yard. As you can see in our picture uh, for some, uh, they do the sanitation lift inspection at the yard and the uh, Herndon escalator maintenance. And currently, they are doing a dynamic testing and phase one tie-in and adjusting cross-bound spacing and adjust some Umata quality concerns. And there are two garages included in here. Uh, the first one is the Herndon Station. The project estimate uh, has been down to 44.5 million, um, and the new the garage is 100% complete, and the, the existing garage will be a reopening expected before the Silver Line Phase 2 service opens. And the bus route was replaced and reopened to the public uh, last year in January. And the Innovation Center Station, the project estimate has been down to 52 million uh, from 57. And the garage is 100% complete, and we still have a punch list system going. And here's the, you can see is um, uh, some picture of the station we're working on. Uh, it's a Hendon station, innovation station, and a Reston Town Center station. Package A, so um, real line, it's a real line system station photos. As you can see, so we are actually working on the landscaping installation along the toll road and testing at Western Town Center Station and also some wall management and the um, Dallas Station lower screen wall. And package B is a real yard photos. So we are uh, currently working on car hosts in service and inspection buildings. 
and also ballast to retamping. Intersection improvement. So these three intersection, Reston Parkway at the Sunrise Valley Drive, and Reston and Reston Valley uh, Sunrise Valley Drive at Herndon Station side road <coughs> drive. Sunrise Valley Drive at Elm and Haley Drive. So these three uh, intersection improvement uh, uh, they all have its parts of the Dallas Phase Two. The first two intersection improvements have were completed. The, the third one, we are currently working on construction. But the construction is completed. We are working on permit and close out. The Sunset Hill Road at Redstone Town Center Station is also completed, and the Fairfax County Parkway at Sunrise Valley Drive um, has also completed. Uh, Tom, before I go into the next one, do you have anything you want to say for the project? Sure, thank you, May. So, um, Obviously, there's been a lot of discussion about phase two. Um, there are a number of, um, I would describe them as, as cleanup issues that the airports authority is working on right now uh, to be able to reach substantial completion, which they have announced the target for that is, um, is September 3rd. Um, part of what they're trying to do is they're, they need to re-space, for, for lack of a better word, they need to re-space the signals which is going to require some additional equipment. Um, there is a challenge in getting that equipment manufactured, and so that's why it's taking a little bit longer than originally expected. Um, but we do anticipate that by Labor Day, they'll reach substantial completion. And then it's typically about four to six months after that, that Metro would actually start service. So we'll keep you informed as uh, we get additional information, but, um, this is very current uh, Metro, or, uh, the airports authority just announced the substantial completion target about two weeks ago. Um, so that's kind of where we are with the, the rail project, but we were happy to answer any questions that uh, that uh, commissioners may have. Thank you. This is, Robert, this is Robert Gowdy, could I ask a question? Yes, please. Yeah. Perfect. Tom or any of you, um, the the, confirm, the word we're getting is that the um, phase two will not be delivered any earlier than calendar year 2022. Is that safe to assume at this point, or is it confirmed? No, nothing is confirmed. Um, so I think what it what the only thing that is confirmed at this point is the target for substantial completion is September 3rd. Um, and then it will take Metro four to six months after that to get to revenue service. So if they actually meet September 3rd, then theoretically January 3rd could be um, uh, initiation of revenue service. If they beat um, September 3rd and they finish it, for example, in August, then theoretically revenue service could start sooner. But um, ultimately, the revenue service date will be set by Metro. So if somebody's telling you they know when revenue service date is, they, they don't know because there is no um, defined date uh, for that yet. But in general, it's probably the end of this calendar year, uh, beginning of next calendar year. Thank you. Could I ask uh, some other questions? Please do. Um, Tom, given that, are you really, are you confident yourself as a poor choice of words, I guess, do you think they're going to probably meet the 1st of 2022 date? And if I look at the slides also, it doesn't portray kind of the situation we're faced with, um, 
you know, phase two and the budget scenario that was presented to the board last week. Um, so maybe just give us your opinion and and maybe we should have a few more comments in these slides or something. So the budget situation has largely been resolved or is in the process of being resolved. Uh, Metro had um, assumed in their budget a July 1st opening for the Silver Line. And so everything in their budget was based on July 1st. As a result of that, of, of the airport's authorities um, release of the information about September 3rd being substantial completion, Metro will adjust their budget. Um, but the main thing that the county was concerned about is that the opening not be artificially delayed for financial reasons, and that it should not be a problem at this point. Um, when the system is ready to open, Metro will have the money to operate the system. And I am confident of that. For more than six months, is that correct, Tom? It, it will be approximately six months of the fiscal year 2022. But in terms of when it actually opens, it, you know, I think there's still a long way to go before we can tell you an exact date that it's going to open. But I mean, once it's open, they're resolving the situation to keep it open. That's what I was. Yes, yes. That issue has been is with the stimulus money that was approved by Congress. That issue is is on its way to being resolved so that we shouldn't have to worry about the rail line opening and then six months later closing stations and things like that. That that should not be a problem at this point. That is welcome news. I don't know for other people on here, but thank you. Sorry. Thanks, Gary. Um if I may ask a question. Has has WMATA signed off on all of its con uh, construction concerns, including but not limited to the concrete panels? No, that still has to happen between now and um, September 3rd. They need That's to sign off on all of those before September 3rd. I will tell you that I think they're all in the in the process of resolution, um, heading towards that signature sign off on, on them. But um, it has not happened yet. Yeah, because my concern and that of many folks in the area is not just speedy resolution, but also the ultimate stable safety of the, the stuff. So I'm I am not saddened that WMATA is taking time so long as it's not inordinate delay. But thank, thank you, you, John. Thank you. Okay, um, so we can move to uh, any other questions? Uh, if not, we can move to our uh, next one. Okay, so Silkstone Connector. So this project is an extension of Silkstone Drive from Sun Valley Drive over the Dallas Toll Road to Sunset Hill Road. Um, provides additional modular capacity on the new north-south alternative. And the project estimate is 216 million. We are currently um, at the environmental stage uh, working, uh, working on federal requirements expect to be complete in early 2020. And our schedule is to have the environmental engineering design phase done by 2025 and um, land acquisition uh, from 2024 to 2026. And start out the construction in 2026. And the funding agreement with the uh, county and uh, between the county and the VDOT uh, to implement for the implementation of the project was um, so was executed in December 19 and 2017. And we already have 154 million and uh, still need uh, 62 million. And we also submit grant application, um, uh, like 62 million requests uh, through Smart Skill F122 to 27. Okay. Um, row seven winding, the Dallas Toro to Reston Avenue. Uh, this project 
uh, we widen Road 7 from 4 to 6 lanes from Jared Valley Drive to Ruston Avenue. Includes intersection improvements, share use trails, and upgrade, upgraded bus stop. Uh, the project estimate is $314 million. Uh, the project is 42% complete. Construction is expected to be done by summer 2024. The right-of-way acquisition is ongoing, and at the same time, we are preparing for temporary realignment of Coving Run Road. And this is a picture at the intersection of the Coven Run Road and the Lisbeth Pike. And the intersection improvement uh, at the Fairfax County Parkway and Sunrise Valley Drive, uh, the traffic analysis report is, was completed, and new lane assignment on the parkway approved by VDOT already. And Reston Parkway at Barrel on Camero Avenue uh, intersection. The conceptual design uh, scheduled to be completed in March 2021. Okay, uh, Willie Avenue. And, and, pardon me, May. I'm sorry, it's uh, Parker. If I may interrupt just wanted to say to call attention to the fact that the intersection improvements are have been funded out of this service district fund. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um Willie Avenue at WOD Trail. So uh, here's the schedule uh, that we uh, expected. So our final design was completed in December uh, last year, and VDOT permits the mission was in it's going to be in June 2021, and uh, uh, land acquisition uh, is completed by June 2021. And the construction is going to begin in summer next year. And we're expecting completion by summer 2023. This is Kelly Weston, huh? Um, I, I have a laptop open that I'm looking at the documents you sent us, and some of these dates are different. So the most current information is what you're showing us on the screen. I just want to confirm that. Um, uh, hi, Kelly. Are you looking at the document from the last week? Yes. Like, for instance, it says uh, land acquisition uh, completion by April 2021, and the one you're showing us shows, oh, June 2021. I just want to make sure I have the most recent information. Is that what you're showing us? It's Chairman yes, Parker it's speaking, Kelly. Kelly. Pardon me. Pardon me. Um, the sheet that I am looking at from the most recent email sent by May, the presentation, is it represents exactly what's on the screen. I don't know what I'm looking at. Okay. So, uh, hi, May. This is um, Miss Roberts. I have a question. Yeah, please do. Um, can you please remind me, is, is this the Wheelie Avenue at the WNOD trail? Is this like an intersection improvement? Can you remind me what this is again? Uh, this is Ray Johnson. So the, this particular improvement, this would be a uh, bridge that would be bridge on the WNOD trail. That would be an overpass of Wheelie Avenue. Perfect. Okay. Yes, because it's hard to cross um, when you're on the WNOD trail right there. All right. Thank you. And Madam Chair, Ray Johnson, again, if I may, uh, we had sent out, uh, May had sent out this presentation late last week. Um, 
there had been some revisions uh, made as of this morning. So you might be seeing some information that in a presentation that you got late last week that doesn't exactly jive with what you're seeing here on the screen. But this is the um, most up to date, most current presentation, and this is what would be loaded to the web. Exactly. Uh, thanks well, thank very you. much. I um, and Kelly, my apologies. I uh, only reviewed a few of the documents. I did not review this presentation. This is what I did print out late, or I did note late this afternoon. So I guess the only thing that I'd like to say is if there are changes to a document, let's highlight the fact that those documents have been changed since the most recent inter iteration that was distributed. And that could be done in the cover email and then we would know to look for an update perhaps. We can do that. Yeah. Yeah, Terrific. Thank you so much. And Madam again, Chair, I, I would recommend not only in the cover email, but I like to see uh, times, uh, time and date stamping uh, on the presentations themselves. So for the PowerPoint, I think it'd be helpful for it to say at the bottom of the first slide that this was, this is the, the product as of what date. So thank you for that comment. Uh, and thanks to staff, that would be terrific. We're all trying to stay on top of it, but I know for me, it's very easy. It's very easy to get confused. Um, may please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, we can definitely do that next time. And here's the picture, a uh, running picture uh, for the Whaley Avenue at the WNOD trail. Okay, active transportation. Um, we actually, right now, we have 28 uh, projects completed and 14 under what's still underway. And uh, in the package I sent last week, it includes the RMAC improvement report, and you can find that uh, in the agenda package. Um, that was the most updated, which it was uh, updated last August. And we will send out once we have the new, the most updated one. And the bike share can update. I, can, May, can I ask a question? When you get a second? Yeah. So you sent out the Russian or 100 mil transpiration project status report. Did you also send out the RMAG thing? That, at the end of the week? Maybe you did, and I just missed it probably. Sir, can you ask it again? Are you, did you ask Gary to repeat his question, May? Yeah, I will. I'm sorry about that. I believe that, and Kelly, please chime in, but I believe that Gary is looking for the RMAG update. Right, can you hear me now? Report. I think what, the, what May sent us at the end of last week was the Hunter Mill District Project Status Report, and that's all the re, all the projects that are going on in Hunter Mill. And what um, Gary's looking for is the RMAG, the latest. Right. RMAG. Correct. Correct. We did not get that. And but I believe that those are available via the website. Yes, Madam Chairman, the link that's in the presentation will lead you to that. Just the RMAG projects. Thank you. Thank you. And we are in the process of doing an update right now that'll be done probably the end of the month, early April. So when that update is done, we'll send that out to the group. Tom, may I ask? Uh, have you received uh, a copy of? A rest and Associations MTAC uh, RMAG report uh, where it does a survey of what is done and what is not yet done. Did you receive that latest version done uh, late last year, I believe? No, I have not seen that. Okay, I, I will make sure that you get a copy of it 
because it, it's our own checking on the ground the the completion status of the various RMAG projects. So I, okay. will, I will make sure that that is sent to you. All right, thank you. Okay. Please go ahead then. Okay. Bike share update. So um, the county aimed to install uh, 19 new stations uh, as part of the federal grant and uh, aiming to the installation is in summer this year. Uh, and, may, uh, may I interrupt to ask a quick question of Tom, please? Tom, those federal monies, are those still tiger grants? Uh, no. Okay. No, I th these are uh, probably uh, surface transportation, regional surface transportation funding, but no, Thank they're you. definitely not tiger grants. Thanks, Mayor. This is Kelly Westenhoff. I'd like to ask, um, we're looking at this, um, looking at our mag made me think of ham cam. Does this- Pardon me, Kelly? It's hear difficult me? to hear you. Okay. Um, looking at this made me think of ham sams. Is there any part of the ham sams um, projects that fall under the jurisdiction of this committee? Um, yes, probably west of um, between um, Monroe Street and Centerville Road. There probably are a few. Um, probably not many, but there's probably a hand, one or two potentially. So we can. Um, include that in a future um, presentation. Most of them are right around the innovation station, which is outside of, of uh, the service district, but we can include those one or two that are between um, Monroe Street and Centerville Road. Well, I recently yeah. saw on Sunrise Valley in front of the Herndon Metro, they are finally, finally working on the, um, the shared use path to go all the way over to Monroe and I wondered if that was Ham Sam's. I, I don't care who's doing it. I'm just glad it's getting done finally. But but it sort of brought to mind that, you know, we have members of this committee that are, are from Herndon and it's important to make sure that we're addressing as a committee their concerns as well. You're right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um okay. So Town Town Center Parkway and the Pass study. Um, so the, um, it's an extension of the town center parkway from Sunset Hill Road to Sunrise Valley Drive. Um, the estimate for the project cost a total is 168 million and the study completion day uh, is anticipated by the summer this year. And there will be a virtual public information meeting on um, Wednesday, April 7. Um, at 7 p.m. and it will be on the public. Is is that going out to people in in Ruston? I'm sorry to interrupt, but this public information meeting I just haven't seen that before. It it will be out um, within the next day or two. There'll be uh, news releases and and wide distribution of that. Yes. Thank you. We're giving you a little preview here. Thank you, Tom. Okay, so um, then it's um, our turn to can do a little recap of our Reston Road section. Um, may I interrupt? May I'm sorry. Um, so you'll be giving us an update of where we are and what we've done, and then we'll head into the recommendations. No, so I'm going to give you a quick update of the, of the service district collection and the road sound rate adjustment. And then, then we'll go to our uh, voting on the tax rate. Well, okay, I, pardon me, let me just review the agenda. Um, I think now would be the best time then to ask for any questions or uh, any questions of senior staff that we have here, 
And I would have to say that we really need um, as a group to thank the amount of time that staff has provided to us, um, both the staff that monitors this uh, service district and our committee, as well as certainly Supervisor Alcorn and um, Tom, Tom Bashadney, of, uh, who oversees the entire FCDOT, um, and Rob Geiger, who makes our electronic community. I'm not going to go into all that, but who makes it possible. Thank you. Um, but I do think it's time to ask for questions. Well, we have everyone on the board uh, from uh, our group about priority about uh, timing, um, any questions that you might have. Could I ask a personal favor? If it, Could we briefly go back so I can take a screenshot of the last slide? Because I wasn't able to make the notes I wanted to. Could you do it for five seconds? Thank you. Hang on here. Okay, thank you. Well, John's <laughs> taking the screenshot. The screenshot. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm done. Good. Well, I'm still going to ask my question. Yeah. Uh, this is purely personal. Um, I would like to know when the loop de loops at uh, the toll road and Route 7 will be connected to the shared use path that's going up Route 7 to make that actually functional for people on bikes and pedestrians. So, um, Kelly, the 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 pride the Route Seven widening project does include um, shared use paths on both sides of Route Seven, and so right now that project is scheduled to be completed in 2024. Um, the shared use paths may be completed um, a little bit before that, but that's what the project schedule is for the full completion. And at that point, they will be connected to the um, the bridge structures that have already been built over the toll road. All right, thank you. I, one of the things that I've noted the last couple of times I've been through there is that the maintenance um, stuff is th growing up and ruining those beautiful structures. So maintenance needs to know to get in there, even if they're not actually connected. Okay, we'll pass that along. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, yeah, question. Excuse me. Gary, I see you on my screen. Would you care to go ahead? Sure. Um, I guess it's Tom. Um, the project at uh, Fairfax County Parkway in Sunrise Valley, you know, it's, it's I guess, in design and so forth. The rest and comprehensive plan has that as an item to be addressed. Existing plan is what's been designed or being designed and planned consistent with the rest and comprehensive plan. So, what we're working on right now is an intersection improvement. Um, the right. Dallas Rail Project has um, improved the eastbound approach. And our project will improve the westbound approach from Sunrise Valley Drive to the Fairfax County Parkway. Ultimately, the comprehensive plan calls for an interchange there. Um, but an interchange is going to be a lot bigger um, undertaking. And so what we're doing right now is doing a um, is doing interim improvements to improve the situation in the short term. And at some point in the future, we'll have to get to the long term. So Without knowing what the interchange might look like in the future, I can't tell you that it's inconsistent, but um, I think the interchange will probably re um, reevaluate the entire intersection. So um, there will be some substantial changes when when we get to the point of doing the interchange. But at this point, that's well into the future. That's very helpful and well into the future is a lot of years, correct? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch what you said. Uh, that's very helpful, um, but uh, that's a long, long time in the future, what you're saying in terms of the interchange. 
Yes, it would be um, probably a, a decade or more into the future. Thank you very much. This is Mike Schindeldecker. I have a related question. Um, Please. Is, is property acquisition a, a component of that nearer term study or would that follow with the interchange design? I think that in the short term, everything else, everything that we would need is pretty much in right of way already. If if we if there's anything that we would need, it might be some easements on the east side of the intersection. But I don't think there's any major land acquisition that's involved in the in the interim project. So then, uh, I guess there wouldn't be any preliminary look at what the final footprint of that interchange might be, and. Um, you know, any, any time savings in the near term while work is being done? Well, there will be time saving from the interim work, but um, we have not done any design work on the, the interchange itself. So I don't, I don't have anything to show you on that at this point. All right. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Adam Chair. Uh, yes, John, uh, one more question. Uh, uh, not a question, but, but a piece of information for yes. uh, members of the committee. Um, most of the VDOT staff know this already, but as we work on the um, rest and comprehensive plan task force to revise the comprehensive plan, um, we are uh, we are looking very intently at the transportation section, and we hope to have that done um, by the uh, at least done within the task force. Uh, completed that that transportation chapter by the end of April. So uh, it, it may raise some, um, um, it, it may uh, sh shed different perspective on some of these things. I think we understand and I think most people accept the reason for all of the roadway improvements, but there may be some new light shed on the transportation thing. So my encouragement is that that this the members of this committee uh, keep abreast periodically of what's happening in the uh, in the task force. So, John, I appreciate I appreciate it's Maggie Parker. I appreciate that information and um, have been following uh, meeting by meeting your progress um, on the comp plan. And thanks for your service. Um, the transportation plan. The little I have been able to glean from what I've listened to because I haven't had access to any of the documentation. Um, I think that we will all appreciate hearing that, but I do want, especially while Tom is in the room, uh, for everyone to understand the process and the time frame in which monies are uh, Let's say um, the Fairfax County DOT is excellent uh, hunters and gatherers or foragers um, while the gaining the money, for example, to do a soapstone crossing. Um, and Tom, perhaps you could address the fact that if some of these things, if we change midstream, we lose that. Maggie, let me just point out that that's a good point. That has been, uh, Tom gave a presentation to the transportation committee of the task force. Yes. They understand that. And I think they accept that. I, I think okay. what may happen are some adjustment to densities, which, which may uh, change project, uh, projected congestion. On the right. So. Excellent. I am glad to hear that the, that Tom's message did go through about that. And we'll look forward to hearing what you have to say. It's you've been working really hard. Thanks a lot. I had a question. I'm sorry, please. Um, do we know when they're going to build a crosswalk on the south side of Reston Station Boulevard to go across Wheelie Avenue? There's currently a crosswalk on the um, North side, but not on the south side. Tom, would you? Are you so are you there is a there is a study effort going on right now related to Wheelie, um, and there are um, the the 
specifics is to deal with a crossing south of the toll road. But a second phase of that effort is to actually look at Wheelie from Sunrise Valley to Sunset Hills and to look at um, the lane configuration, um, to look at additional pedestrian um, improvements, particularly on the east side of Wheelie, and to look at those crossings. So that is a second phase of the effort that's underway right now. Um, and so there's not, I can't tell you specifically that it will be addressed in a particular time frame, but that has been identified as something that we need to look at. When is the second phase supposed to start, do you know? Uh, the first phase is um, generally supposed to finish um, this spring, and we have requested money for consultant support for the second phase, and we're waiting for, for that approval. So um, could start this summer potentially, um, but um, we will need to see how the, the consultant support comes through. And I can't say that it has been very much supported by staff and it's kind of being fast tracked is my feeling. Um, I just want to be respectful. Uh, the county and the supervisor's office has been and our members have been very supportive and being flexible on the meeting time. We've got about half an hour left. Just FYI, so. Um, and we could always have the option of going to a second meeting, but if there are no other questions, we'll let May continue with the uh, information about the road fund. Thank you, Maggie, and thank you for answering the questions. Yeah, so uh, we're now at our, so this is our road fund and the service district collection. For the road fund, as we start collect uh, in 2017 and to today, we uh, the total collection is five million five point zero four million, and the estimate of uh, total amount of the 40 year plan um, is twenty two hundred and eleven million, and right right now we collect about two point four percent of the total uh, 40 year plan. And the service district um, uh, money, we start collecting in 2018 and in 20, and this, and by the end of by today, uh, we have collected a total of seven point, around 7.5 million and the 40, in the 40 year plan, uh, we're supposed to collect about 140. Uh, meaning, and right now we are 5.3 percent of the total. Um, um, and we also have, uh, and the total receipt is 12.5 12, 12 million, and uh, it is 7.7 percent .7 of the total uh, plan that we have received so far. And for the approved project on uh, Fairfax County Parkway and Sunrise Valley Drive interim improvement, um, we, uh, the board have approved the 500,000 for the project and the Redstone Parkway and the Baron Cameron Avenue uh, also approved the 500,000. And the total project made is 2.5 million. And the leave out balance of the road from the service district collection is 11 point, around 11.5 million. And the road bound rate and adjustment. The road bound rate uh, adjust the annual, annual <clears throat> the rate, the rate adjusted annually by the annual rate of inflation. So the rate was based on the CPIU uh, by the beginning of every year. So this year, the proposed rate adjustment is 1.4% uh, over the last 12 months uh, by ended in January this year. And as you can see, this is um, the all the road fund area, the rate for all the road fund area. And for the rest, and we have uh, 10.38 uh, per square foot, and the 
Uh, this is for non-residential, and for the residential area, it's $2,268.59 per unit. And uh, the board will consider the, prop, the prop proposed rate uh, in tomorrow's meeting. Um, and it will, if they approve, um, it will affect on April um, 2021. So for the assessed value history, what we are happy to announce that um, Preston uh, district area actually ha um, have 3.79% uh, above the previous, previous year. For the, uh, the service district rate recommendation, uh, for the last year, the service tax rate was set at 0 0.021 per every $100 assessed value. And on March 9, 2021, the board approved uh, the volatile tax rate and uh, the rate to uh, set that at 0 0.021 in every $100 assessed value. And for this year, the staff recommends holding the rate flat at the 0 point, 0 0.021 for the FY22. And um, we need the advisory board action on both for the FY2022 rate. Uh, I will pass um, this to Maggie. Uh, Chairman Maggie Parker. Uh, thanks so much, May. Is is there a suggested uh, language on the vote of FY22, or would it just be that uh, we as a group vote to maintain the same? Can I, can, I, yeah. can I ask a question, Maggie? Please. If I go back to the previous chart, um, uh, May, if you wouldn't mind. The assessed value history, Gary? No, this one. Uh, the, no, the, the next one. Um, the next chart. R rates and adjustments? No, I'm going the other other direction. The one right before the one you were on. Go, go towards where you were going, May. No, go the other way. <laughs> You're going backwards. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, so it so, says, no, that one, that one right there. Uh, it, it, keeps flipping, it keeps flipping back. Slide 25, May. 25, May. So it's, it says the board approved the advertised tax rate on March 9th. In other words, I guess the week before last meeting. It can only be, remain the same or be adjusted down. I, I guess I've forgotten this. Why is that done before what we're doing today? Maybe I'm confused to what, what's going on here. It's my fault. But if you so, this is Tom, Madam Chairman. Do you want me to describe that? Sure, please. And it's not, it's not your fault, Gary, but Tom will clarify. So each year um, after the county exec proposes his budget, which he did on February 23rd, right. the board votes to advertise tax rates. So they advertise the overall property tax rate and then they advertise service district rates. At that point, the board can adopt those rates or they could adopt something less than, but they cannot go higher than. Um, so they didn't advertise something higher than 0 0.21 cents uh, because that's the, you know, that was what has been agreed to as part of the, um, the uh, rest and transportation funding plan. So they, they advertise that, but they won't actually vote on the rate until um, May 4th, um, so, or May 3rd, May 4th actually. So they won't vote to adopt yeah. the budget and the actual yeah, Tom, rates. It's, uh, 
Go ahead. Uh, Supervisor Alcorn, can I jump in here? You sure can. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, Gary, I think you raise an excellent point. And frankly, uh, uh, I did not recognize the timing of this. And might I suggest in future years that uh, uh, the, the, the district advisory committee here uh, meet before we do advertisement. So if that's possible, Tom, I don't know if that could be done, but I think that would be advisable. Sure, I mean, we, can, we can certainly do that. I think what we've done in the last several years is just had the uh, county executive recommend the, the rate that was consistent with the original plan adopted by the board. And so the board could choose to do something less than uh, 2.1 cents, but the board wouldn't be able, at this point, would not be able to go higher than 2.1 cents. My sense from the past discussions uh, with the advisory board is that you probably wouldn't want to go higher than 2.1 cents. No, no, no. It's, it's we, the can, we can process to me. It's it's the it's the the process question of what we're looking at here, and when we're looking at it in relation to, you know, decisions the board has to make and to have some value added. It does seem like it should be an earlier point to me. Um, I mean. Mr. Alcorn is, is the one affected here, but it seems like we could help more if we saw this a little earlier. We we can schedule the meeting whenever it's convenient for the, the advisory board. So we could schedule it in January and February. Um, that would certainly be fine with, with staff. This is Kelly Westenhoff. I, I would agree. I was I was thrown by it at first, but um, I understand we've done it this way and I understand our our process this way, but it does sort of raise the foregone conclusion kind of idea. And I think we want to stay as far away from that as possible, because if it's a foregone conclusion, why have a board? So good advice and thank you for Supervisor Alcorn being willing to to push that. Thanks. Yeah, the, yeah. Thank you, Kelly and, and Madam Chairman. Just yeah, and I'm not suggesting that the, the rate should be raised, but I think I think it's it's probably a, a better process uh, to do it that way. So, thank you. Thank you for every. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Supervisor Alcorn, and thank you, Gary. Yeah, we can definitely um, where um, set our meeting like before the but advertise the tax rate and. Robert Gowdy, quick question. Please, please. Uh, the, the relevant slide, it seems to me, is slide 22. Uh, we're now in through year four. We've raised 5% of what we hope to raise over a 40 year plan. On a linear line, you'd be at 10%. Uh, this is not a linear process. You've got property values increasing, which was helpfully revealed on the penultimate slide. Um, there are other calculations here. I guess I'd just like to hear from staff. Are we happy and content that we're raising revenue at the rates we anticipated as we move forward? Excellent question, Robert. Madam Chairman. Great, great Thanks, question. So uh, we always anticipated that the amount of money that would be raised would vary over time. Um, and so when we did the original calculation, we took the total that was to be raised, which in, in the case of the service district was 138, 39 million, roughly 140 million, and just divided it by 40 years. Um, so we do anticipate, though, that that's not going to be a linear um, approach. You can see that over the last several years from 2019 to 2021, it's, it's increased slightly. So 2 million to 2.2 to 2.3 million. And we would anticipate that over time, yes, that that would increase. So in terms of collections, we are comfortable that uh, the district is headed in the right direction. Um, and we're not um, uncomfortable that that there's a problem or there's a concern. Um, the, the numbers will vary over time. There's no question about that. But in general, the, the trend will be higher as property values increase. I guess the follow up, a different way to ask that, Tom, would be I'll be very parochial about this, but I'm not being parochial in the, in the grand scheme. This applies to any one project. But 
obviously there are those of us who feel the town center parkway underpass is an essential project and really should be if anything accelerated uh, what i would want to make sure is that we're raising revenue at a rate that is not going to delay that project or any other project uh, in any kind of way uh, based on what's planned can you make that representation yes because the town center parkway underpass isn't funded through either of these sources it will be funded through the public sources which are the other collections so the what we apply for for the state what we apply for from the regional nbta what we apply for for federal funding so um we were not anticipating funding that project with either of these sources yeah fair enough so then just extrapolate that to projects we are funding like the sunrise valley intersections or I yes. think people want to know that none of those projects are being delayed or are being lagged as a result of lagging revenue uh, generation. Yes, I can make that representation. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I, I yes, have just one more comment. It would be helpful. I, I haven't looked at this in detail, but um, the changes between a previous presentation and this one in terms of things slipping, projects slipping or changing, is there any way for you to give us a heads up on things that are, are changed from a previous status uh, to the next one so we know and don't have to go back and compare? So typically the, um, the advisory board has been meeting in the fall and then in the spring. And so, yes, we can give you an update on project status in the fall. Um, I don't think the status changes dramatically um, over a month to month basis. So uh, we can certainly give you an update in the fall on where projects stand and, and let you know if there are any delays. But um, if, if necessary, we could also um, provide information more frequently if that's desired. By well, I just, we were Kelly saying something about the difference in the you know, the material provided in today, I assume that's because of some, I heard different dates and I assume that's because of some slippage, just something to tell us that something is slipping um, would be useful. Just just to clarify, so, so Ray and May did send out a draft presentation to you on Friday and over the weekend, <clears throat> I had the chance to review it and we did make some updates, but none of them affected the end result on those um, those two projects that are funded by the service district. Okay, it was just a general item of, you know, knowing what things are sliding a little bit as we go in, this would be helpful, that's all. We, we can do that. And and thanks, Tom, and uh, we certainly, our, our effort isn't to make more work for staff because we know you're uh, spread thin. Gary, it's a great idea, however, to just get some kind of marker as to, you know, we know that prices are jumping dramatically in every construction industry. You know, is there anything that's being shaken up because of that? Right. Or what about all of the progress that we've made on so many projects countywide owing to COVID and the lack of lack of congestion, they were able to burn through a lot of those. It would be helpful to have us right. an every other month update with even, you know, relatively anecdotal information from um, transportation, because this does come up to us once every six months. And sometimes it could be a real, you know, yeah. awakening. Well, that would be really helpful to me. I, I agree. Thanks, Gary. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are there any other comments before we look at the 2022 rate, which in terms of uh, the commercial side of the house, and actually I would think all of us who uh, pay taxes, whether it's residential or commercial, uh, the tax rate is recommended to stay the same. Uh, terrific, then I would ask someone to move that, please. The suggested amount remaining the same for 2022. So moved, Robert. Thanks, Robert. Is there a second? I second that. 
Thank you, Gary. Are there, is there any objection? And oh my gosh, hi, Ann Mater. It's good to see you. Um, already, uh, Madam Chairman. Well, if you should probably take an actual vote and ask for those in favor and those opposed. That, that's a great idea. Uh, May, could you please um, call the roll and ask for a yay or nay on the motion presented by Robert Gabby and seconded by Gary as to um, maintaining the tax rate for 2020. Um, I need to call everyone or just? Yeah, just do a roll call vote. Right? Oh, okay. Um, um, Maggie Parker? Uh, Parker votes aye. Um, uh, Kelly Westenhoff. Westenhoff votes aye. Michael Schindel Decker. Schindel Decker votes aye. Angela Robach. She left. Oh, okay. And Mater, was she here? Yes. yes. Mater says aye. Thank you. Uh, Peter Henry. Okay. Uh, John Mooney. I vote aye. Uh, Robert Gowdy. Gowdy votes aye. Gary Moffin. Gary Moffin votes aye. Thank you. Um, the rate has been. Um, I'll get back to you. Um, I was not uh, called on. Oh. Adam, uh, please, please go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, Adam, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, Adam. I didn't give your name because I know you're a new member and I will um, uh, send you a new uh, package for new members um, after this meeting. Thank you. I vote aye. Thank you. Does that complete the roll? Or Joe, did you get called on? No, Joe Kazar votes aye. Thank you, Joe. Does that complete the roll call vote? Yeah. Already, thank you. The uh, 2022 rate um, at uh, 0 0.021 cents uh, has been approved by all attendees with one absent for the vote. Okay. Thank you, Maggie. You're so welcome. Uh, and next, uh, any question or item for to include in the, our next meeting? Uh, I think we heard that um, we would love to have some communication in between meetings. Uh, and uh, I don't know, is there anything else from the audience? Pardon me, from the committee. This is oh, Mike we Schindler do Decker. have to go through the, are we going through the funding plan review next? Uh, we can, if you would like to. We can absolutely do um, an update of the funding plan if you uh, if you would like to, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ray. It is included here. Many of us have have been familiar with it for years, uh, but I'd like to hear. Can you? Are we raising hands or are we yelling out into the <laughs> into the atmosphere? Who would like to hear this? Madam Chair, I would have to leave the meeting before it's concluded because of the uh, task force meeting, comp plan task force meeting. I understand as will some uh, others. Yes. Uh, I'd like to hear it even though I'm going to go over to the other meeting. And do we have to do anything with bylaws before this meeting closes? Oh, yeah. So the last time will be the bylaws. 
So at last meeting, we already, uh, everybody read the bylaw has been approved by the advisory board. And next, we'll be taking the bylaw to the uh, board of supervisors for approval. We're aiming should for the day for on May and having them approve the bylaw. And that's it. That's what uh, we have uh, updates for the bylaw. And that's the presentation. And Madam Chair, this is Ray, if I can jump in. With respect to the bylaws you had uh, mentioned, something about some through or red line version. There is a comment in the bylaws uh, that was made by uh, Vice Chair Westenhoff several months ago. And it had something to do with the makeup of the advisory yes. board. And the comment was more of a suggestion as to um, for a recommendation on the makeup of the advisory board. And I believe that we had discussed during the last meeting that the advisory board composition has already been approved uh, by the board of supervisors. Right. So it, it, it is something that it, we can't uh, muck around. Just, can, so can, we, can we not take that comment out or does it need to remain? That we can, that we can. And we that will work great. prior to it getting the board, yes. The other one, uh, Ray, is article two. And it is in fact correct that we do not have any input on on the road fund rate. Um, okay, so article two. We're in the service district ta tax rate, but not. Ray, are you able to share this so that everybody can see what's being discussed? I can do that if uh, if I'm allowed to do so. Um, let me see if I can. I, I'm, I'm I, can I, can, I can read it to you. The addition that Meg is talking about. Please is, share the screen if we can. That way, everybody can actually see it. Thank you. Yeah, May, could you put up the bylaws, Article Two? On the yeah, it's on page one. Yeah, I can. That will resolve all this last time. I did too, which is why I'm checking, Kelly. I did the minutes, so I can tell you that I said that we did. <laughs> I believe those. So why are this presented with the markups instead of just telling us you're going to send it to the board, you know, as approved last time? That was my question, but if you scroll down, May. Can you, are you able to see my screen? We see it, and so just scroll down, if you would, uh, to Article 2, the last uh, two sentences. Yes, right, that that blue mark, yep. And if you could uh, size it up a bit, please. So I don't know who made the comment, but they were correct. So we can we can strike this last our piece of this last sentence here. And yeah, you can strike it all. I think from put funding plan period and strike the semicolon through to rest end period. Okay. And you can certainly strike my comment. Because I do distinctly remember last meeting that I said, okay, I understand. I withdraw it. And okay, sure I recall why. that too. I didn't want to. Yeah, I'm not sure why we're, I mean, if it's done, then if we approved yeah. them, then we should be getting the clean version. Thank you, Kelly. And Gary, I don't know if you've left yet, but I would, no. I would be happy to facilitate a discussion with you and any other board member with Ray on the funding plan review. Adam, it might be helpful for you just because you're new. Um, if you are interested in having that conversation, it wouldn't take more than 20 minutes. Um, I'd be happy to facilitate that happening with Ray. So please. Uh, that would be great. Are, are we allowed to do that? Um, 
I'm just curious if, if well, it, you know what, Ray, I understand your concern. I would be happy to work with the supervisor's office to find out. And <laughs> if we are not able to, I would be happy to have a conversation with my neighbors about that. So, Madam yeah. Chairman, yes, please, Tom. So, any 2 of you can speak to each other or speak to okay. us together. But if there are more than 2 of you, then we would have to advertise as a meeting. Um, I understand. If anybody is interested in the briefing, we can um, arrange for um, groups of two, and we can we can do it that way, or we can, um, you know, advertise a meeting and and the whole group can participate. Whatever is is the preference of the committee. Thank you so and, much. And I'm, I'm perfectly content meeting with uh, meeting with groups of two if you if you all choose to do it that way. Beautiful. So, I would I would ask that. If it's okay with staff that you just give me a buzz and I could help coordinate so that we're not burdening them. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, I'd like to have that person. Happy birthday. Thank you. That's great, Gary. So Gary has and Gary has signed up for the two on one. Or no, I'm kidding. Um, if anyone else is interested, please shoot me an email or a text message. Yeah, this is Joe Kassar. I'm, I'm, I'm be fine with that as well. Oh, terrific. Anyone else? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd be interested in some election. Right. Later. So we can, we can begin to work on coordination of the use uh, this week. Great. I would be interested too, Maggie. Is that you, Adam? Yes. Excellent. Great. And at 727, time to just change your screen. Um, thanks so much. Thanks to the supervisor. Thanks to. Thank you. Beg your pardon? Thank you very much. You are welcome. Um, thanks, Tom. Uh, who's going? Who's going to move to adjourn? I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Very Thank well. you. Second, Second Robert. Mike Schindelecker. Thanks, Mike. Um, alrighty, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks everybody for your um, interest and commitment. Uh, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank you, staff. Thank you, staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.